Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon VGC 2019 Battle Series. I hope you're all well, having a great day. We're here, it's Friday. We're ending the week up with this Zygod Sogalea team that we started playing this week, and it's been so much fun. If you've missed any of the games from this week, you can go back up here and check them out. I'll put a card in for you people to check out the games so far and our progress with the team so far. And like I said at the start of the week, and I've been mentioning as we've been going on, what I want to do with this team is, although it's very standard build, I've put it together, put the EV spreads together myself. What I want to do is mimic what we did with that Kieran White team and come across and really delve into some of the weaknesses the team has and things that it does struggle against and then tweak and put our own twist on things as we end up next Friday on the episode with a, a really kind of nice finished polished team that we can take ready into tournaments and have a lot of success with. So this combination now is really strong. We haven't seen as much from the Zygarde as I would have liked to have seen but we've got another week to go and we've still got two, episodes, two games today in this episode to give it a good run out with so never say never just yet but uh, let's hop into it guys I hope you're having a great day and um, looking forward to this one it's got the music on already ready to go and if you do enjoy this content make sure you do drop a like on the channel on the video make sure you do subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss these daily episodes uh, Flinch Squad Circuit, our guide series, and everything else in between that is all good VGC content and everything to do with Pokemon. So yes, we're going to see our first opponent today, and uh, we'll hop straight into Team Pre. So they are running a team of Xerneas Eveltal, Incineroar, Landorus, Tepu Fini, and Amoongus. So we've got that very common XY core here from our opponent. Um, some things to watch out for, and particularly those two dark types and the ground type that are going to really threaten our Solgaleo. So we need to protect that at all costs, um, because it is the one good thing that we've got against that Xerneas on the opposite side of the field. The XY team kind of feels very difficult for this team, so it's going to be a good test for us going into this first game today. We definitely need need to utilize uh, Intimidate support and Fake Out support. So uh, Incineroar is going to be very, very useful for us in this match in particular. I think um, we definitely need Tapu Fini. Like, I think my opponent probably brings Tapu Fini of their own, but just for that extra security and, and kind of board positioning support that it can give through Icy Wind and other things like that, we do need it. Um, I'm going to bring Solgaleo and Zygarde as well, and we'll lock straight. Already locked in, so we'll get straight into this one and see how we get on today. Hopefully it's, it's not too hard. I do feel like this is one of the matchups that is very difficult for this team, though. Um, and this is one of the matchups I feel... I'm really pleased we bumped into it, because this is the one thing that I think... Hmm, maybe we need to patch this matchup. And this is where the Venusaur slot could go out. Something else could come in to really give us a hand here um, against this, these combination of Pokemon. We're going to see the Veltal and the Landorus come up for my opponent for this turn one um, and we will be able to uh, see the Intimidate from the Land Race, get the Intimidate back onto it with our Incineroar. I think one of the things I'd like to probably do here is just switch Incineroar straight out for Zygarde. I can see the Land Race protecting here and just Icy Wind and get some damage onto this Eveltal. I mean the other option is going for a Nature's Madness into the Eveltal but we can always do that the next turn if we so please. Uh, the Avelto here probably goes for a knockoff, if anything, into our Tapu Fini, I would imagine, or a Snarl. But I doubt a, <coughs> a Snarl's coming out, so we'll just go for that Zygarde switch and go for the Icy Wind. Because if the Landorus doesn't protect here, we can punish it by going for that Icy Wind and getting the speed drop. But it does just switch out. We're going to see the Incineroar come straight out for my opponent. Try and cycle and intimidate, at least onto our side of the field. But because our Incineroar is slower than the Landorus... We'll go out before it can get that Intimidate onto our Zygarde. So, get Zygarde in. Um, and with an Icy Wind, even though we've got the Fake Out pressure from the Poison Incineroar the next turn, uh, we've still got access to Swagger if you want. There's a Snarl. It's not going to really affect us too much um, on our end. And Tapu Fini really doesn't care about it because you're not using Icy Wind for damage. You're using it for kind of speed control and uh, support. So, we will be able to get this Icy Wind onto Valtor sure the double intimidate is going to be nasty for us to deal with of course um, and I think this next turn I'm just going to coil and go for a swagger as well um, or I could I could go icy wind again 
but I'm not. I'm going to go Swagger because the double Intimidate is going to be something that my opponent's going to continue to do. I would imagine we might not even see a fake out here from this Incineroar where it just U-turn pivots out. Uh, the Landorus come in and we get the Uvelto back in on that side of the field. So getting a Swagger now would put us, like, and a Coil would put us to plus two. So kind of keeps us ahead of the game a little bit here. Yeah. Um, we need to be careful, of course, if this Xerneas does decide to come out. Because the Landorus kind of checks the Sogaleo and also the, the Velto does as well to a certain extent. But you can quite happily rely on the fact that that Velto with the Snarl is going to be... Mm, we should Icy Winded. Unless this Incineroar does go for a fake out into our Finny here, which would make sense. Yeah, yeah, to cover the Icy Wind there. Okay, so we'll get the Coil off with Zygarde. Which is nice, so... Uh, at least back to neutral now. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll go for a thousand arrows, and uh, we'll bring in Incineroar. It's a tough matchup this one because it's like taking down three Pokemon and having Asoga Leo left to deal with the Xerneas. That's basically the situation broken down to its base core um, that we need to do and it's not so easy when we are seeing things like this come out. Um, if this is into Incineroar, it's unlikely that we survive this at minus one. Could be into the Zygarde though to try and nuke it, but I, I very much doubt it. I think we're going to try and take the support network away from the Zygarde here. Yeah, um, which is the Tapu Fini, unfortunate for Incineroar. Very unfortunate indeed. There's no way we survive that. And minus one. We need the minus two, really. It's hard to, to get that, isn't it? But I mean, that gives Finny a better time, doesn't it? And we do some nice damage to both targets. We're going to see probably a U turn now from this. Yeah, Incineroar. So it keeps that Intimidate going for future turns. But we will be able to get Tapu Finny back onto the field now. And depending on what my opponent brings in, um, we could even bring in. Uh, we could bring in Sogaleo. Yeah, Sogaleo, yeah, I think we're going to bring in Sogaleo now. Yeah. Uh huh. Let's do that. Let's bring in Sogaleo. Because we've got Wide Guard that we can go for if we want to. If we think the Landorus is going to stay in, but the Xerneas definitely protects here, I think. So we could just go for a Thousand Arrows and a Wide Guard. <clears throat> With the Z-move gone on the Landorus as well, we can kind of pin it in on, on, on these situations. Because, yeah, I would imagine the Xerneas doesn't want to entertain being in front of uh, Sogaleo here. So it's either going to retreat or protect. Um, if it switches out, it's probably likely to be Eveltal and an Earthquake come out. Yeah, but it means we get that free thousand arrows with uh, Zygarde. So we're kind of baiting our opponent into doing this. Um, and then it makes them think twice, so they'll bring in the Incineroar probably the next turn. There's the Earthquake. Then we've got the switch into Finny the next turn. We get some nice damage onto everything as well. This is the thing, we're just chipping stuff down at the minute and putting it in range to get some damage onto it. Um, we'll just keep going for those Thousand Arrows and we'll bring Tapu Finny back onto the field. Uh, Incineroar coming in, yep, that makes a lot of sense. And if we take the Incineroar down now, it does mean that the Landorus probably gets a free switch in again. We could have probably went for the Z move into Eveltal here. Really, that might have been a better thing to do as well. Foul play coming out, mm, maybe not. To tap your fin, you're not going to do too much though. A thousand hours comes out again from Zygarde. Takes down the cinema. Does open the door again for that Xerneas to come back in now, though. That's the problem. With Zygarde. I think we probably take a Moonblast from this range. 
Mm. And it probably geomancies here, to be honest, as well. So we could nature's madness and thousand arrows. This Xerneas. It's going for an oblivion wing. It's going to be into the Finny, I think. Uh huh. Geomancy coming out. Yeah. Hmm. We can still win this one. It's going to be very tough, though. Especially once it gets boosted up. But we're not out of the running. We'll get this Nature's Madness into the Xerneas, so I'll take it down to 50% health. Just depend on how much this Thousand Arrows does. Um, I think we're minus one at this point. Yeah, it's pitiful. Pitiful damage. Um, okay. So I think we protect again. We'll try and get another Nature's Madness off into the Xerneas. That might put it in range for an extreme speed. It may do. <laughs> Oh, I just moon blasting there. Okay, I mean that makes a lot of sense to do that. But it depends on the speed of this Ivalto, because I do think that Sogaleo probably outspeeds this Ivalto. I want to say it does, and the Phytinium Z will be enough to take it down. Um, and I'm going to extreme speed the Xerneas, and I'm going to go for it, because I think the all out pummeling should be enough to take the Sibelto down. We get an extreme speed into Zern, don't do anything, of course, Moonblast. If it's into Sogaleo, nah, it's into the Zygarde. Ah, uh, it's faster than us, okay, okay, that, that seals the deal. My good old friend. But we will take down the Evelto at the same time. Hmm. <sighs> yeah. I think, like, we went into this match thinking that it was going to be difficult, and it definitely was. So this is definitely one that we're going to be writing down, saying, yeah, okay, we need to do... We need to have something in the team to help us a little bit better against this core, because I do feel like this one is the one that just completely ruins us. And... Um, just it's there's so many things in the team that just support and make it awkward to have anything threatening against the Xerneas out without it being checked from its partner. Um, so Lander is going to come in. Uh, they both outspeed Sogaleo, and we'll go down to even a Moonblast or a Dazzling Gleam here. So we're just going to be the graceful ones and uh, protect. Uh, I mean, we could Y guard in case. The Landorus, they go dazzling clean. There's no need for them to do that though. So um, we'll just we'll just gracefully forfeit here and say very good game to my opponent. And we'll mark this down as one of the teams that we have had a little bit of a problem with. So we need to tech in. If you've got ideas for what you think we should do, do comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are to patch this matchup. I've got a few ideas myself, so we'll be putting them into, into motion over the weekend. And any suggestions that you do make, I would love to try out. So um, we will come back on Monday and we will be changing things up. Like I said, we've been wanting to do that all week going into next week anyway. But um, this just gives us a little bit more to work on i guess as we go into our next game and hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent as it always is as always guys if it does we'll come back and um we will just cut to where we've got our opponent so we've got kevin though from canada kevin from canada the next one and he's playing a team of lunala serena xerneas incineroar smeagol and stakataka is kevin also known as edu Maybe. It is the Edu team. He won uh, the Oceania International Championships with, or a very similar build to that. So we've got that restricted combination of um, Xerneas and Lunala. We've got the support and options all around it with one other big big powerhouse there in the stack attacker with the trick room mode for the team. We've got Smeagol uh, support with the fake out, follow me. Uh, lovely kiss. Everything you can think of, it's going to do wide guard, all sorts. you got the Incinero there, the Intimidate support, Fake Out support, Pivot support, and then the Serena that prevents uh, any sort of um, 
figure to pull from our end of priority attacks. Again, going to be a bit of a difficult one. We need to manage the Lunala very well. I'm going to lead off with Incineroar in this one. And Tapu Fini. Yeah, Tapu Fini. Um, I'm going to bring Sogaleo. And I'm going to bring Zygarde as well. And we're just going to lock straight in. Because I feel like between them, they should do a decent enough job against this team. It's just managing the field. We need the Misty Terrain to help us against potential sleeps from the Smeagol. We can't discount that it might, it possibly has Lovely Kiss, it might not as well. Um, but we're just going to have to just be very careful around what we're doing and make sure if we don't see Serena lead, uh, that it could be something that my opponent switches in turn one to get around us faking out, say, Xerneas. But we're not going to see that. We're just going to see Incineroar and Lunala come out for my opponent here. And the messy terrain set by Atapu Fini, as we see the Intimidate now from our Incineroar, indicating that we're a little bit faster, maybe, or if it's a speed tie. It's likely a speed tie, I would imagine. Um, it's the favor is returned from the opposing Incineroar with its Intimidate. So I think turn one, what we'll do, we'll just knock off. Um, hmm. Yeah, we will knock off the Lunala and we will Icy Wind as well. But we'll see a fake out probably from the opposing Incineroar. Maybe not though, because Slaw Incineroar is known that they're probably not going to be able to utilize their fake out as well. Tend to pivot out. So we might get away with just getting this double up into the Lunala unless it reveals Protect here. And Lunala are going to switch out, so we're going to get the knockoff onto something. It is going to be that Serena, um, which is quite handy going into the next turn. And I wonder if we do see the U turn from this opposing Incineroar. So we'll get some nice damage onto the Serena, lower its speed a little bit more. Yeah. And now we kind of know what my opponent's brought as their four Pokemon. I'd be surprised if it wasn't the Xerneas. Knock off that Aguard Berry, and there's the U turn from the opposing Incineroar into ours. Okay. Xerneas now hitting the field for my opponent. Okay. I mean, it's not not the worst at all. We're going to see the Serena definitely U-turn here. Um, and we could potentially just... Oh, well, I mean, yeah. What we'll do is U-turn and we'll Nature's Madness and the, the Xerneas. We'll try and get Sogaleo onto the field. Or we're just going to see a hard switch. It's going to be back into Incineroar. That's better than seeing the Lunala come out onto the field now. Definitely. We'll probably see Protect, if anything. Oh no, just a Dazzling Gleam and no Geomancy, which is even better for us. Because um, we're always expecting the Geomancy. So no Geomancy is good. Might see it next turn. But we are bringing the Sogaleo in. <clears throat> which we'll do now and then I want to switch out Tapu Fini because I want to save this terrain for later in the game because if we are going to utilise the Zygarde later on we need that special defensive boost um, do we attack the Xerneas or not I feel like the Xerneas probably switches out but at the same time, if we don't attack it and it geomancies, we can get punished for that. So that's the the, the, the question there. Do we want to leave it alone and expect that we... Um... The thing is as well, we probably get faked out from the Incineroar anyway. So it's going to get the geomancy up regardless of what we do. Um... But we've got to try and manage things a little bit because we don't want to let it geomancy. And then the next turn when we get Incineroar in, we can fake out. Uh, the, the Xerneas and go for the all-out pummeling into the Incineroar taking that down and then that would be trouble because that leaves the Lunala to come in next to that Xerneas and that's what we want to avoid the Lunala next to that Xerneas Geomancy'd that is what we don't want to see ooh we're not going to see yeah it's just going to switch straight out is Serena going to come back in okay do we see the Xerneas that just protects here okay that makes a lot of sense Thought we might get lucky there. 
Um, but no such chance. Uh, we'll go for the Sensor Strike, and I'm just going to go for the Flare Blitz into Serena here. I think we probably outspeed this Serena. If it's a similar one to Edu's, I know he run a quite a slow one, so um, we should be able to pick up the knockout if we don't see the Incineroar come in on that Xenia slot, of course. We'll have to see. Hmm. So, yeah. Incineroar. They all have pummeling. It would have been risky again though, wouldn't it? We need to be sure when we're pulling the trigger on these sort of things. Uh, but we will get some damage onto this in cinema and definitely put it in range for a superpower uh, to take it down. Which is always good. Sogaleo is so much fun. It's such a good Pokemon. Yes, yeah, definitely in superpower range now. There's a Flare Blitz. Is this enough to take down the Serena? We do open the door now for the Lunala to come back in though. Ooh. Just missing the knockout. We're gonna see this Serena. High jump kick. Oh no, we lose our way to deal with. Deal with Lunala. <sighs> um. Okay. Things just got a little bit more tricky for us. Hmm. We can bring his eye guard in. I'm gonna miss the seed boost. We can pick up two knockouts here if we'd like to. Like. We, we totally can. Uh, you've got to worry about potential. Um, I'm going to go for the Z move into Incineroar. And I'm going to go for. I'm just going to go for a thousand arrows as well. Incineroar faking out. Ooh, into Sogaleo. Okay. What's the Serena going to do? Just U turn, I'd imagine. I'm surprised it has high jump kick. It's not something that you see so commonly now, but it is very effective when you see it played. So all you need to do is get that Incineroar into range and just do it, and then it really does remove it from the field quite effectively. And it's still a bulky Pokemon, like its bulk always surprises me. We'll be able to get this Incineroar down, smash it into the side of the mountain there, take it down, get rid of that. It does open the door for the Lunala to come in now. If we see a U-turn. Lunala and Xerneas out on the field. That's the one thing we didn't want to see too much of. Um, hmm. Okay. Does the Serena come back out onto the field? No. Okay, the Xerneas does. Actually, I don't mind this too much because we just sun steel strike and thousand arrows. It might have been an idea to bring Tapu Fini in for Sogaleo, but I feel like there's only attacks here. I think we do take a Moonguy's Beam from the Lunala as well. Psy Shock, okay, doubling into the Zygarde. Maybe expecting the Sogaleo to protect here. Moon Blast, this will take it down. But I mean now. It's still not so easy. It really isn't. Because we'll take down the Xerneas, yes. Um, but Tapu Fini coming in this next turn isn't too bad because we can take Tapu Fini, like we'll be able to Icy Wind with Tapu Fini. And then what we can do from there is hopefully just double up into the Lunala slot. Because Serena is such low health at the moment that we'll be able to um, be able to pick up the knockout onto that. And then potentially survive an attack from the Lunala. Mm, let's go. Yeah, we have to go Sun Steel Strike into it and then just Icy Wind. And hopefully it doesn't miss the Serena here. It does go for a faint. It's going into the Sogaleo, expecting us to protect here. Hopefully we are able to survive this Moonguy's Beam from the... Uh, it is the Z-move. Of course it is. So this is going to take down 
Sogaleo, 100%. And even if we protect it there, we can get around it because of that um, that. Thing. And it is into the Sogaleo, it is going to be more than enough to take us down, unfortunately. And I think that is probably game there, because we're not going to be able to take down the Lunala 1-on-1 -on -one with that Tapu Fini. Uh, which is a little bit unfortunate. And I think, like, these teams as well, like Lunala... As well as the like the Xerneas builds with the Lunala or the Xerneas build with the Abelt are two cores that really do cause us a lot of problems. So I think it's looking for a little switch ups within the team that can really help us against these sort of things. Um, we can totally nature's madness here. Um, I mean icy wind again just to get try and get some speed advantage. But we're going to take a lot of damage from either size shock or anything else in between. And sorry about the noise in the background friends if there's rustling yeah Psyshock's going to take us down next turn so it doesn't really matter what we do and the one thing we could have looked at maybe would be a swagger there uh, with the misty terrain disappearing but because it's still up on the field we've got really no hope to deal with this so we're going to have to just do this and then say good game to my opponent And there we are, the side shot coming in. So, I think, like, we've had a really good run this week. That's the thing. We've had, like, really good... I mean, we've won pretty much every game up to today. So, today we've lost both games, which is a bit unfortunate. But against two really harder calls, I feel. And they're the things that we want to be coming up against. Like, I'm not disappointed by them. I think... This is good. This is good information for us because this is what we need to have to improve the team going forward. Um, because if we didn't have this, like we can go into next week without these two games, we've got to be thankful that we've played these and think, oh, the team's doing really well when it's actually not. And there is different cores, and there'll be other cores out there that we do struggle against as well. But I do feel like these two cores that we've played today are the two primary ones that we need to really look at and adjust and make the team a bit more stable against. So these are the things we'll do coming into next week, guys. Um, again as always and I'm always thankful for the comments so thank you and please keep them coming but if you've got any suggestions for how to approach and maybe change these builds and you want to just air them to myself let me know and uh, I will definitely consider them going into next week but we're going to end it up there guys so I'm going to say goodbye have a great weekend thank you so much for tuning in I hope you've enjoyed today's episode have uh, a lot of fun whatever you're up to over the weekend and I'll see you next week starting again with this team so until then guys take care of yourselves and bye bye yeah.